Today is about professional, neat, elegant PowerPoint morph transitions that you can apply to your presentations. So some time ago, I did a PowerPoint video called three PowerPoint hacks for instant improvement. One of the tips was about the morph transition and morphing into shapes. I showed a simple example, but it's something that a lot of people liked. So it's time now to take a look at practical examples. These will give you some ideas on how to use morph in your presentations. In the first example for morph, I want to convince you to rent this beautiful summer home. One way of doing this is just to show you this picture and talk about the different areas, like how you get extra light, how you have a great kitchen and a wonderful couch to lie on. But another way of doing this, actually a better way of doing this, is to zoom into certain areas so that your attention is on the part of the house that I'm talking about. This is going to help me convince you better because you're going to be paying better attention. The first step is to duplicate this slide. Just right mouse click, duplicate slide. Next step is to make this picture bigger so we can zoom in on a specific part. Now I have a good resolution picture here, so I'm just going to zoom out here by holding down control and using the mouse wheel. You can also zoom out using this control on the bottom. Now I'm going to make this picture a lot bigger. I can see here in the preview what it's showing. Let's make it even bigger. Now that looks better. Next step, let's bring attention to the kitchen. So right mouse click, duplicate slide. Now I already have my zoomed in levels. So I'm just going to position the part that I want on the slide. That's the kitchen. That looks good. Let's quickly bring attention to the couch as well. That looks good. Now I can also make this a bit smaller to show more of the area. Now it's also good practice to then come back to where we were. So I'm going to take the original slide and duplicate that and then put it last here. Okay, so now we have everything set up. I haven't activated Morph. I just want to show you how this looks like without Morph. Here's the house. Here's the windows on top that give you extra light. The kitchen, the couch, that's your house. Now let's take a look at this with Morph. All I have to do is go to the second slide. I'm going to hold down Shift and click on the last slide. This is going to select them all. Now go to Transitions and select Morph. Now take a look at the presentation. That's your wonderful home. You get extra light up here. If you go to the kitchen, that's where you're going to cook your meals every day. And here you can lie down and take a nap after you have your meal. Your beautiful summer home. In the second example, you want to present your marketing team. Now only three of these people work in the marketing team, Maria, Sarah, and Rob. Now, if you were presenting this, you'd be saying something like, well, the person on the left side, Maria, she's the marketing manager. And then you have Sarah, she's the one in the middle, but more to the left side. And Rob is the one standing on the other side of Maria, the one on the right, right? It's a bit complex to bring attention to each of these because people are just trying to figure out which one you're referring to. A better way of presenting them is to use Morph. Because with Morph, you can get this effect, which saves you from a lot of unnecessary talk. You probably notice that we're working with two different colors. The person that's spotlighted is in the normal colors. The rest are in grayscale. Now, to achieve that, we need to also work with two different images. Why? Because the way Morph works is it looks at the next slide to see if the same object is there. If it is there, it's going to dynamically change itself to get to the final object. This means that our two images need to be present on the first slide. So I'm just going to take this one, copy it and paste it over itself. Now, one of these should be in grayscale. So the bottom one, select it, go to picture format, color. I'm just going to go with a light gray like this one. For the second one, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to put it exactly on top. That's our first slide. Now we're going to right mouse click and duplicate this. Next, I want to make the picture bigger so I can bring better attention to each person's face. I'm just going to zoom out, select both pictures and increase the size here. This looks good. Now click away and only select the top image. Go to picture format, crop, crop to shape 
and I'll go with oval. Now here you have to be careful. Don't move the top image. I'm going to press Ctrl Z to go back. Instead, what you want to do is adjust the crop area. So click on crop, use the crop handles to adjust it to the area that you want. I only want to bring attention to Maria here. So I'll adjust this accordingly. I'm also going to go and insert a text box and add her name and position. Okay, so that's it. The first slide is done. Next, right mouse click, duplicate. This time, I want to bring attention to Sarah. I'm going to select both pictures and move this to the side so Sarah and Rob are both going to be visible on the second slide. Now, I'm going to adjust the crop area of the top image. So I'm going to click away, select the top image. Now, don't move this because then you're moving the picture. Instead, go back to picture format and click on crop and adjust the crop area and bring it over Sarah's face. Now I'm also going to move the text box, bring it to the side and adjust this to her name. Next, let's duplicate the slide again. Right mouse click and duplicate. This time we're going to bring the crop area over Rob's face. So select the image, go to picture format, click on crop and carefully adjust the crop area. Also adjust the text box and the text as well. Okay, so we're done with this slide. Let's duplicate the original slide so we can come back and see the whole team again. Now I'm going to hold shift, select these last four slides, go to transitions and click on morph. Now check this out. Let's take a look at our team. That's the team for marketing. We have Maria Cruz, who's the marketing manager. Then we have Sarah, who works in marketing as well, and Rob West, who is our marketing expert. For our last example, we want to present a timeline, and we're going to use Morph into Shapes for that. So here, of course, one option is just to present it like this, but it's too crowded and confusing. You could split it into separate slides. So like I've done here, I just have the first point. Then on the next slide, I have the second point, the third point, and so on. Now, when we go to presentation view, we have no special transition here, but we get to talk about each specific point. What happens if we activate morph on the slides? So I haven't done anything except I'm going to go ahead, hold on shift, select the last slide, go to transitions and select morph. Now check what's going to happen when we switch between our slides. So that's the first one. Check this out. The line is moving, the object and the text box are disappearing and appearing. Now, why does the line move? They're separate objects in the first one. And we can confirm that if we go to home, select selection pane, this has number 28. This one is 33. We can see that on the first slide, it's 28. On the second slide, it's 33. It's different objects. Why is it morphing? Well, it depends on how you created the first slide. So when I created these lines, I copied and pasted the first line. It's smart enough to realize that because I used copy and paste, I probably want it to morph if I activate morph in transitions. So that's the really cool thing about that. It saves you a lot of time. But what about these icons? Well, I didn't copy and paste them. Instead, I inserted them from the icons here. They are separate objects, but that doesn't matter because I can force them to morph. All I have to do is give them the same object name, but before that, I need to use two exclamation marks. So let's change this object name to exclamation exclamation and call it whatever you want. I'll just call it image. I'm going to copy this because we're going to need that for this one. Let's rename this next one. The next one. And the last one. Okay, so now check this out. Now we get the first shape morphed into the second shape and the next one and the next one and so on. We don't have that effect for the text box. You can use the same technique. You can also do something else for text. 
you can morph the characters. So I'm gonna select these slides, actually just until this one, go to Transitions tab for Morph, under Effect Options, select Characters. And now let's take a look at how that looks. Working hard to get everything rolling, we realize what we should be doing, but we were wrong. We watched lots of videos and we succeeded. Okay, so that's how easy it is to apply Morph to your timelines. I hope these examples give you some ideas on how you can apply Morph to your presentations. Generally, transitions and animations don't get a lot of love in business settings. And it's for good reason too, because some of these transitions make your presentations look a bit cheap and a little cartoonish. But the great thing about Morph is that it has the opposite effect. It makes your presentations look more professional. So I hope you enjoyed today's session. Don't forget that thumbs up if you did and do subscribe in case you aren't subscribed yet. Thank you for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.